were there any missing books of doctrine in the Bible? Because the Bible feels like a story where we're walking halfway into a conversation with the characters discussing doctrines among themselves, and all we get are snippets. Where are the books where they learn all the teachings they are expected to believe? Uh, like the, what these things that are not explicitly attested, um, but the church teaches are apostolic, or um, I think so. Yeah, I mean, is this coming from oral traditions or? Uh, no doubt, like the Catholics are, are uh, well, they think that the apostles wrote the New Testament or, or sidekicks of the apostles. Like, it wasn't Batman, but Robin, that's close enough if he wrote the Gospel of Rome. Uh, and uh, that the Catholics say, well, okay, uh, the, we have apostolic teaching in the New Testament, but it's obvious these guys would have had plenty more to say. Uh, and yeah, that, that's a good point. But like Martin Luther said, there's no way to know what it was now. Uh, there's just uh, the stream is too polluted, if you want to put it that way. Uh, but I think you, you have within the New Testament competing, clashing views. And that, uh, like the Gospel of John, it's, it looks to me like a volleyball game, Christologically, that uh, you have, for instance, these incredible statements like uh, John 14, somewhere in there. Uh, Philip says, uh, Lord, show us the Father, and that'll be enough. And he says, what, I've been with you so long, you still don't recognize me? Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Uh, that's what you call modalism or patropassianism. Mm. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Uh, and then the, what's Jesus say next? Or don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? What? To me that sounds like scribal backpedaling. Somebody said, oh, wait a minute, this is too strong, let's see if we can water it down a little bit. Uh, and, and there's a lot of stuff like that in John. It does, doesn't have a consistent view. Was Jesus a flesh and blood human being? Oh, it sure says he was. Uh, the word became flesh and all that. But then you look closer at, at the passages. You see, Jesus said, uh, I thirst on the cross. Who wouldn't? Well, it's, then it goes on to say he said this in order to fulfill scripture. It was like lines in a play. Uh, or he sends in chapter 4 the disciples to uh, go to the local deli in Samaria and, and bring some food back uh, and he asks the woman for a drink of water but then he doesn't drink it and it's just a, a platform to say well I could give you the water of eternal life etc and when they come back with the groceries they say, eat master and he says I have food to eat that you know not of what is this is uh, is this real incarnation or not and uh, so what's going on or the uh, first epistle of John, there is perfectionism. Whoever is born of God doesn't sin because he can't sin. But then it says, if anybody commits a mortal sin, uh, give up on him. You, you can't do anything about it. But uh, short of that, if we confess our sins, he forgets. Which is it? Is it impossible to sin or not? Either the guy that wrote this was a multiple personality, or we have scribal corrections. They, they didn't dare take stuff out of the text, but they figured they could misdirect the reader by saying, oh, well, it doesn't really mean that, because take a look over here. And so I think you're reading debates uh, within the, the text. Paul seems to denounce Gnosticism in one chapter of 1 Corinthians and then embrace it in the next one. Yeah. Uh, women can't speak here, but they can in this other chapter of the same book. Uh, what is this? And it seems to me these these books are patchwork quilts that, that do, like the scrapbooks of different factions in the New Testament period. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. So it's, it's a book that's fun to, to research and mm. try to unpack the way you're doing. The problem is when somebody tries to latch on to one interpretation and say, this is the right one, and if you disagree And the with whole it, thing has to be subordinated to that because of this, this insidious theological assumption that God is the author of Scripture and he wouldn't contradict himself. Look, there could be such a book, but it isn't this one. Right. Uh, this is obviously not that. And to try to dress it up and make it look that way, it, it's just, it's like the theologians are like political spin doctors uh, that, oh, uh, Hillary Clinton uh, said that she's for open borders, but she didn't really mean that. She meant this and uh, uh, all that stuff. It's just sickening to see people... Uh, 
obsequiously uh, trying to pull the wool over your eyes and theologians who say they believe in the one who says I am the truth they don't care about the truth they just care about the party line right. and you can sympathize because they think if they don't they're going to fry in hell right um it's like pastors who often can't say what they think or they lose their job and uh, you can't really blame them. Uh, integrity matters but if you got a family to feed uh, it's, it's a real mess but that's the way the world is.